Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of trekking through compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 39, Journey to Babel. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode Journey to Babel, which aired on November 20, 1967, and occurred on Stardate 3842.3. Story Synopsis. The Enterprise transports ambassadors to a conference to discuss the admission of Cordon, a star system comprised composed rather of mutually combative races to the Federation. Corridon contains a nearly unlimited supply of dilithium crystals, crystals, but its small population and lack of strong government have allowed illegal mining operations by outsiders seeking to exploit its natural resources. Sarak is the 102-year-old ambassador from Vulcan who is accompanied by his wife Amanda to the conference. To Spock's surprise, or rather to Kirk's surprise, they turn out to be Spock's parents. Also to Kirk's surprise, Sarek is cool towards Spock, apparently because Spock has chosen to devote his life to Starfleet instead of the Vulcan Science Academy. The conference is to take place on a neutral planet codenamed Babel. McCoy questions Amanda about Spock and finds out that as a youth, he had a pet Sela, which is a sort of a fat Vulcan teddy bear with six-inch fangs. Meanwhile, Uhura has detected an unidentified transmission from the Enterprise itself, and Chekhov suspects, subsequently detects a small ship of unknown origin paralleling the Enterprise just out of phaser range at warp 10. From Section A3 on Deck 10, Lieutenant Joseph reports that Tellarite Ambassador Gov has been murdered. Kirk ascertains the death was instantaneous following the expert breaking of his neck. This brings Sarek under suspicion since he had been involved in an altercation with the Tellarite after accusing his people of smuggling from Cordon. However, when Kirk begins asking Sarek questions, Sarek suffers from a mal- turns out that Sarek suffers from a malfunction in one of his heart valves, a Vulcan equivalent of a heart attack, and could not have engaged in the attack on the Tellarite. Meanwhile, Spock detects tritanium emissions from the alien ship's hull after it transmits a message. Uhura determines that the message was received somewhere aboard the Enterprise. However, Spock is unable to decode the fragment of the message which Uhura has intercepted. Sarek reveals that he has had three previous Vulcan heart attacks and has been taking a drug to combat it. It requires an open heart operation, but the ship stores do not have a sufficient supply of Vulcan blood, especially of Sarek's rare Vulcan T negative blood. Despite the fact that Spock's blood is a mixture of human and Vulcan factors, he can provide a blood transfusion to Sarek after McCoy uses an exper- experimental stimulant to increase the rate of blood production. The Endorian Telev, a minor member of the ambassador's staff, attacks Kirk near Deck 5 and stabs him. Kirk requires medical attention, so Spock assumes command. Under these circumstances, he cannot take time off to give the transfusions to Sarak and cannot pass command to anyone else because he is best qualified to command the Enterprise. His mother pleads with him, but he refuses. Finally, Kirk pretends to be healed and takes command from Spock, ordering him sick bay. Uhura detects another transmission originating from the Enterprise, and this time it is pinpointed from the Andorian and the Brig. A secured search by security reveals the transceiver hidden in a fake antennae. The Enterprise is then attacked by the alien ship while Spock and Sarek are on the operating table, endangering both lives. It is moving too quickly to be hit by the Enterprise and is able to damage the Enterprise sufficiently that it loses a shield. Kirk fools the alien ship by turning off its shields and internal power, lulling the ship enemy shipped in for the kill. Before, after Kirk disables it, it uh, self-destructs. In one of the cheesiest ending scenes, Spock, who is recovering from the operation, surmises that the perpetrators were Orion, since Orions are known to have been smuggling dilithium from Cordon and anxious to prevent interference. McCoy confines both the injured Kirk and recovering Spock to sickbay, shushing all protest, ending with, quote, well, what do you know? I finally got 
the last word, end quote. So what's the fun fact for this episode? The screenplay was written by D.C. Fontana, and she came up the, uh, with an idea for an episode on Spock's origin story. In Starlog issue 18, she was quoted, I sat down and created two characters, emphasizing their triangular relationship, the rift between Sarek and Spock with Amanda positioned in the middle. It was uh, Fontana who named Spock's mother Amanda. She chose that name because it means worthy of being loved. So what are the three key takeaways from this episode? Well, one of the things this episode really screamed to me was the need for compliance to work very closely with human relations. Uh, HR is a key ally of the compliance function. Uh, compli- rather, HR can reinforce and indeed operationalize the message of compliance at all points during the life cycle of the employment relation, beginning with uh, literally when a uh, a resume or other application for employment is inputted. So HR is a key ally of the compliance function. Two, dynamic tensions between employees must be resolved. You simply cannot have a situation that we had in this case where there was such a a vociferous argument that uh, a uh, blows were almost came to between the Telluride ambassador and Sark, and then, of course, later the murder of the Telluride ambassador, which was wrongly pinned on Sark. So you need to uh, watch for these types of tensions in the employment relationship, and if they go too far, uh, you need to intervene, certainly from the HR perspective, but frankly, you may need to do so from the compliance perspective as well. And finally, number three, be careful in freewheeling banter. As part of the cheesy ending, Spock asks Sarek if his mother has always been this emotional. Sarek says, yes, indeed, she has been, to which Sp- Spock asks why he married her. His response, it seemed like the logical thing to do going forward. Join us tomorrow where we take up the episode, Friday's Child. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. 